Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna be covering the five most common mistakes that I've seen in my patients who are new to GLP-1 agonist therapy and how they corrected it. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dr. Kevin Joseph. I'm an internal medicine physician in upstate New York, and I've lost over 140 pounds on GLP-1 agonist and peptide therapy. So let's get started. The number one problem that I usually see in my patients is choosing the wrong injection spot. And what do I mean by that? So for those of you who are new to GLP-1 agonist, there are three recommended injection sites the abdomen, around the umbilicus, probably an inch or two away from it, the upper arm, or the thigh. One of the most common mistakes I see in my new patients is that they're not trying different injection sites in the beginning to see which one is most optimal for them. And what do I mean by that? I recently made a video on a clinical study that showed the different effects of the three different injection sites when it came to appetite suppression as well as absorption. It showed that by a slim margin, injecting into the abdomen allowed for faster absorption into the bloodstream. Although the findings of the study were not statistically significant, the same findings is something that I see with a lot of my patients. So, you know, for most of them, they see the best appetite suppression and weight loss with injecting into the abdomen. And one of the first things that I ask my patients when they report no weight loss or no appetite suppression is have they tried changing injection sites? Because, you know, although for me personally, injecting into the abdomen provides the best results, other patients and other users have also reported that injecting to the thigh is best for them or injecting into the upper arm is best for them. So, you know, I recommend trying to rotate between the three sites to find out which one provides you the most appetite suppression and weight loss and stick with that area. I also get a lot of comments because people are worried about scar tissue formation um, with repeated injection into the same area. But if you look at how tiny the needle is and how frequently you are injecting, which for most people is once a week, it's highly unlikely that you are hitting the same exact spot, that tiny spot, every single time to cause scar tissue formation. However, if you already have existing scar tissue in that area, I would try to find a different area of subcutaneous fat where there isn't any scar tissue, but in that in that same region. So let's say that you might've had, I don't know, abdominal surgery or you know a tummy tuck or something like that. I would still try injecting into the abdomen, but away from any sort of scar tissue. The second most common problem I see with a lot of my patients is not tracking calories. During your first few weeks on a GLP-1 agonist, or when you increase your dose, you'll notice significant appetite suppression. So you'll just eat less naturally without even thinking about it. However, your body will eventually get used to the medication and those natural hunger cues will be thrown off and you may be eating more than you realize. If you're new to calorie tracking, I highly recommend keeping a food diary to either write down or using an app such as MyFitnessPal to track what you eat throughout the day. I think you have to pay for MyFitnessPal, which sucks, but there are a ton of other free apps out there that offer the same benefits and allow you to track your food. So I definitely recommend using those to keep track of what you're eating because you might subconsciously be eating more than you realize. On the opposite end of the spectrum, one of the other problems I see in my patients is eating too little. And that usually happens regardless of which dose they're on. I'm sure most of you are thinking, and you know, I was thinking the same thing, like, wow, that's amazing. You know, they're gonna lose weight so fast. And you're right, they will lose weight. But the problem is it's not the type of weight we wanna lose, right? It's not fat. The biochemical processes within our body are so much smarter than we think. And the body knows that we're trying to limit its calories. But the body is super efficient, almost too efficient, and it finds energy sources from other places, the main ones being muscle and bone. This is why early on, so many people experienced muscle loss and the media kind of harped on GLP-1 agonists causing muscle loss. You know, I've even had some patients who get DEXA scans biannually for osteopenia. It means basically weak bones, early stages of osteoporosis and to try and prevent the progression to osteoporosis. And those patients who when initially started on GLP-1, they were losing weight but the problem was their DEXA scan was getting worse. It was showing that their bones were getting weaker. You know, by restricting their calories so much, the body was finding nutrition from breaking down their bones. To counteract this, you know, I recommended that they start tracking their calories and only limiting it to a 500 to 600 calorie deficit and making sure that they take in adequate amount of protein. And most importantly, like I mentioned in my previous videos, you know, focus on resistance training, even cardio, you know, I don't know if it's a fun fact or not, but people who are actually overweight and obese, they have a decreased likelihood of having osteoporosis. And it's because when you're overweight and you're heavy, the amount of weight that your bones have to support strengthens them. Every action you make strengthens your bones, but when you're losing weight and you're restricting your calories, the bones get weaker. So just be conscious of that when you're eating in a calorie deficit. I know it's easy to wanna lose weight as quickly as possible, 
because that's what I wanted to do. And I made the same exact mistake. Um, you know, I was so focused on the scale. I was so focused on a number and how I looked in the mirror instead of, you know, focusing on my health. And it's something that now I have to build back. I made a video previously about how I regret not incorporating resistance training early. So trust me, I recommend focusing on your protein intake, not restricting your calories too much and focusing on resistance training. Another common mistake I see a lot of my patients make is not consuming enough electrolytes or water. When patients come to me with the complaint of feeling fatigued or having brain fog when they start a GLP-1 agonist, although it is a common side effect of the medication in general, one of the things that I first think of is electrolyte deficiencies. I've made a pretty in-depth video about this, so definitely check it out. Um, but to quickly sum it up, GLP-1 agonists have a diuretic effect on the kidney. So you may have noticed that you need to pee more frequently or you pee a lot more volume-wise after starting a GLP-1 agonist, and that's completely normal. But this can quickly lead to dehydration and electrolyte deficiencies if you don't monitor it closely. That combined with decreased food intake is a recipe for disaster, honestly. So if you're noticing signs of dehydration or low electrolytes, such as brain fog, fatigue, or you know decreased exercise endurance, I highly recommend you start an electrolyte supplement. I don't have a specific one I recommend. I just buy whichever one's on sale at the time at Amazon or Sam's Club or whatever. You can even look up YouTube videos on how to make your own. But you know, just make sure that when you do replete your electrolytes, you're also keeping track of your labs, um, you know, keeping an eye on your sodium, your potassium, and your magnesium when you get your blood work done. The last mistake, and the one that I see most frequently, is unfortunately oftentimes not on the patient, but actually due to the provider. When Ozempic and Manjaro were first introduced on the market, Eli Lilly recommended a titration schedule of four weeks on each dose, starting at 2.5 milligrams until ultimately getting to and maintaining on 15 milligrams, which oftentimes I see providers just blindly following this titration schedule, even though you know their patients may be losing weight and having appetite suppression and A1C control on their current dose or even a lower dose. Sometimes these increases in dose can lead to unwanted side effects like nausea and vomiting and even debilitating fatigue when someone was doing just fine on a previously smaller dose. So please make sure you communicate with your healthcare provider and even if they suggest you go up in dose, if you feel good on your current dose and your blood work and your labs look good, I would have an open discussion with them about continuing to monitor you on your current dose. These medications are still new. A lot of providers aren't educated on the nuances that are involved when it comes to GLP-1 agonists. And this is exactly why I started my channel, so that you can advocate for your health and you know make sure that you have an open discussion with your healthcare provider. All right, guys, if you have any mistakes that you've personally made and you've learned from, or if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. I'll see you next time.